Hey you guys, it's Melissa from Through Malango, and today I wanted to tell you a little bit about my story personally and how it evolved into my business today. So this is going to be kind of a long story time, so I'll try to keep it as brief as possible and get straight to the major points. But we do have to go back all the way to 2019 when my son was born. In early 2019, I found out that I was pregnant with my first child. My husband and I were absolutely thrilled. Now at the time, we had just recently relocated back to McMinnville from the Southern Oregon area. And because we had recently relocated back here, we were living with my parents at the time. We both had nine to five jobs and when we found out we were expecting, we decided it was time to find a rental of our own. We found a place not too far from my parents' house, so we rented it and we were living there for the rest of 2019. In late 2019, I was due in November, but in October I found out that I had cholestasis of pregnancy, and that is a condition where my body was producing more bile acids than my system could handle. And because of that, there was a risk to the baby. So my son had to be born three weeks early. I was induced and I gave birth to him in mid-October of 2019. After I delivered my son, he had to be transported to the NICU in Portland. He was having some issues with his oxygen levels and we discovered he had a pneumothorax, which was a hole in his lung. He was in the NICU in Portland for two weeks and that was a very, very hard and stressful time for my husband and I. We decided that we wanted to be as close to him as long as possible, so we ended up going to the NICU unit and the first night we were there, we actually ended up sleeping in a pumping room inside the hospital. The next night we didn't have anywhere else to go, so we started to look at hotel room options. We actually dropped our stuff off at one of the hotel rooms and while we were there, we found out that we had been approved for a room with the Ronald McDonald House Charities. They were able to put us up for the duration of his NICU stay and we are forever grateful to them for the program that they offer and the support that we received while we were there. After two weeks, he was finally released from the hospital and we were able to come home. So my husband and I both had a little bit of time off of work where we could stay at home and just be with our newborn baby. It was the most amazing time. After a few weeks, my husband did return to work and I wasn't scheduled to go back to work until January of 2020. As soon as I did return to work in January of 2020, I was finding it very difficult to get back into the swing of things. Not only was I missing my brand new baby, but I also was breastfeeding so I had to pump at work, which was kind of awkward because everybody knew what I was doing when I had to carry all of my equipment to the private room that I was given to do so. I also was trying to figure out my new role as a mom and get back into the swing of working and I was finding it really difficult. Not only that, but shortly after I gave birth to my son, I started experiencing some severe pains in my stomach. I contacted my OB and she said that it was just gas pains from everything that goes on after having a baby. I didn't believe that. I knew that they weren't gas pains, but I just had to let it go because I had so much else to focus on. In February of 2020, after we both were back at work and my son was being cared for by my mother, we decided we were ready to start our hunt for purchasing a house. We, we went to a lender, we found out what our budget was, and we started looking at different properties. And in that process, while we were doing all of that, my husband was laid off from his job. At the time we both worked at the same company and so it really took a toll on me even more so than everything that I was already going through. Shortly after my husband lost his job we discovered that we were at the beginning of a pandemic and there was a lot of changes rapidly happening to try to understand what was going on with the virus and make sure that we were staying as safe as possible. Our current rental wanted to renew our lease, but at the same time, they wanted to also increase our rent, which was just not feasible with everything that we had going on. So we decided to move back in with my parents. 
in about April or May of 2020, I had another really severe stomach pain episode. So I went to the doctor and we finally determined that my problem was gallstones. So in May of 2020, I had my gallbladder removed and while I was off work recovering, I downloaded the app TikTok to pass the time. As soon as I got into TikTok and I started interacting and liking videos and skipping over videos I didn't like, the algorithm kind of figured out who I was and what I would be interested in seeing. From there, small business and stickers landed on my For You page. And that's how all of this started. I have a bachelor's degree in small business management and entrepreneurship, and I've always had a crafty side to me. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I've been making cards ever since I can remember. My aunt is the one who got me started with rubber stamps, and it's just been a passion of mine for a very long time. If you're interested in seeing more about the stamping side of things, you can go to the link down in the description below and click on my other channel, which has a bunch of stamping tutorials and other really crafty content. So while I was scrolling through all of these inspiring young businesses that were starting sticker shops, I said, hey, I can do that too. So at the end of May in 2020, I bought a Cricut, I bought some supplies and a printer, and I went for it. In July, I went viral on TikTok and I had hundreds of orders for my stickers. I was so excited. I started expanding. I introduced some reusable cold cups to my products. And throughout the next several months, my products changed and evolved into what they are today. I now not only still offer my art on stickers, but I also offer my art on sublimated products such as coffee mugs. This is one of my favorite designs and I also have it on a journal. I am kind of obsessed with things that match, so I don't know if you can tell, but I have these and I have this design on several other products like stickers, magnets, keychains, you name it. I am so excited with how far I've come in my business and I am so excited to see where it takes me in 2022. Currently, we are working out of the upstairs portion of my parents' home, but our biggest goal is by the end of 2022 to either have our own retail space or to have our own house that we can work out of and have home offices. My husband also has his own business, which I will leave in the description below as well. He makes artisan jewelry and forged goods. We pretty much started our businesses at the same time and we have both been going strong the last two years. However, finances have been very difficult lately, so my husband is working on getting a new job. He'll be working for a company that he really respects and that he's really looking forward to, so I'm really glad that he's going to be able to do something that he still is going to enjoy day to day. And in the meantime, along with all of the products that I offer at 3 milelanecocom I also offer services. I do services such as small business coaching to help others figure out what their directions are, figure out how to navigate different platforms, do all of those back office things. I also offer virtual assistant services that can include anything from responding to emails, going through photos, organizing your digital files, all kinds of things. And I also offer some basic graphic design services. I've made brand kits and logos for several clients and it's one of my most favorite things to do. I am hoping to expand the services side of my business as well, so I have a lot of plans coming up for 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this story time video. I hope you enjoyed getting a little bit more insight into who I am and how Three Mile Lane Co. came to be. Make sure you leave me a comment down below and let me know if there's another story time that you're interested in or that you'd like to hear me expand on. And please hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot to me and it helps me to grow my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.